Hey everyone, it's Carissa Wiley here for Neat and Tangled. Thanks for joining me today. Today I am sharing a colorful project featuring some new products from the February 2019 release from Neat and Tangled. And I'm loving how these products have a little nod towards Valentine's Day, but they're perfect for using year round to send little love notes or tell somebody you're thinking of them. So let's get started on our project today. I'm starting out with several different colors of textured cardstock and I'm using a textured cardstock on purpose because I'm going to keep these die cuts rather simple and plain and I think a textured cardstock is a great way to add a little something to a plain die cut to kind of add some interest to it without adding too much pattern or something like that. I think it just steps it up just a little bit. And you can see that the rainbow that I've chosen today is not what you would think of as like the primary color rainbow with like the red, orange, yellow, green, blue, purple. It has all of those tones in it, but I've shifted some of the tones. Like I chose to use a hot pink or a pinky color instead of the red. My orange is a little towards the corally side. I kind of have a limey green that's not so primary. For my blue, I'm using something that's a little more aqua or turquoisey. And for the purple, I am using, I, well, <laughs> I, I don't know how to describe this purple. It's not like a true, true purple in my opinion. So this kind of shifts that rainbow and makes it a little less primary. And that is my preference. But if you choose, you can definitely use the red, orange, yellow, green, blue, purple primaries. And that would make a beautiful card as well. Now I'm taking the Skinny Strips die set, and I'm going to die cut it several times. Now, I'm not using all of these sentiment strips today on today's card, but die sets like this, I love to die cut them from several different colors of cardstock and have them on hand so that I can quickly grab them and stamp on them when I'm looking for a quick sentiment strip. So I'm taking the colors that I use for sentiment strips the most. I'm taking white, black and a very light gray and I'm die cutting this entire die set from these card stocks and then I'll just stick the extras in a little jar on my desk and I'll have them ready to go when I need a quick sentiment strip and I won't have to pull out my dies in order to create it. Now for the time being, I'm just keeping all of these die cuts kind of corralled up in this little white plastic tray that I have. I bought it from Daiso. I can't link to it. I'm really sorry. People ask me about this little tray all the time. It's really cheap. It's like from a Japanese dollar store. <laughs> But I recommend just having something on your desk that you can throw all your die cuts in so that you don't lose them. So now that I have all of my die cutting done, let's go ahead and create our envelopes. Now, this die creates score lines, but because I die cut two at one time, some of those score lines got a little bit obliterated. They're not as deep as they would normally be if I had die cut these on their own. So I'm using a ruler to help me get those score lines kind of reinforced and started. And when I fold on score lines, I actually like to fold in the opposite direction a little bit first. So I'm actually folding it the wrong way first. And then I go back in and fold it the correct way and really reinforce that score line or that uh, fold with my bone folder. So I'm just lining the edge of the ruler up there with the score line that the die created. I'm folding it in the wrong direction first, and then I'm taking it and I'm folding it back in the correct direction and reinforcing that fold with my bone folder. And you'll know the correct direction because the valley is going to be on the outside of your fold and the hill is going to be on the inside of your fold. So now I'm going to use the male background stamp and I am going to use my Misty to stamp this onto some Nina Solar White cardstock. So to use a cling mount rubber stamp in your Misty, you want to take out that black foam piece and then you can just close the door of your Misty to mount that background stamp on the lid. Now when I position this piece of heavyweight cardstock, I'm actually going to inset it just a little bit because if I push it all the way into the corner, I'm not going to get edge to edge stamping most likely. So I'm just going to kind of inset it on my Misty. I'm using the grid lines on that background to help me keep it straight inside of my Misty. And I inked this up just partially, kind of on an angle, starting from that upper right corner down to the lower left as you're looking at it on the stamp. But when I stamp it onto my cardstock, it's going to go from the left to the right, as you can see there. So when you're doing a partial stamping on a background stamp, you want to think about it in the mirror uh, kind of orientation. That's something, 
that I'm constantly struggling with and I do wrong all the time, but kind of keep that mirror image in mind. So once I have that background partially stamped, I'm taking two of these banners. They are the same width and the same shape, but they're not the same length. So I'm just kind of connecting them to make one really long gray banner here. And this is gonna be kind of the landing place for all of my colorful envelopes that I created. So I'm placing those together with a little bit of tape runner adhesive, and then I added some foam adhesive along the back of that. And now I'm gonna use some liquid adhesive right on the tip of the inside of the flaps of those envelopes, and I'm gonna close these up. So just a little dot of glue, and then I'm just kinda of holding it closed until that glue grabs down on to the opposite side and kinda of sets into place. This glue doesn't take long to set up at all. And now I have a whole rainbow of adorable mini envelopes to put on my card front. So I'm gonna add these envelopes onto that little banner with some foam adhesive. Now you could definitely do this with tape runner adhesive and save on the bulk, but I'm the kind of girl that more is more. <laughs> And that goes for everything, even dimension on my cards. I just think dimension is one way to kind of step up a simple card and really make it feel a lot more special. And it's one of those things that you don't often see on a store-bought card. So I, I really like to add dimension to my cards. But like I said, if you're looking to mail this, maybe you want to skip one of the layers of foam adhesive that I've used today. So I'm just kind of arranging these all kind of back and forth, not straight onto this banner. They're just kind of staggered in together on foam adhesive. And when I get that final one placed, that blue one's actually on a double layer of foam adhesive so that it sits up above the others. I have this colorful, adorable little grouping of mini envelopes that's ready to go on my card front. And I love that I can move them all as one piece. So now I'm gonna go ahead and stamp a sentiment onto my card front. So I put my card front into my Misty here and I've gone ahead and replaced that black foam piece back inside of my Misty so that I can use my clear stamps. And I am using this sentiment from the typed sentiment stamp set and it says email is good but letters are better. <laughs> And I absolutely love the sentiment set. There are so many perfect, tiny little sentiments that you can add onto your cards. And I love this one because I really do think that a handwritten card is such a beautiful gesture in today's world of technology. It really says something for you to kind of not only hand make your card, but to take the time to sit down and write a handwritten note inside of it. It really does speak from the heart. And in today's world where everything's like text, which I love, don't get me wrong, <laughs> and emails, I think a handwritten note is just so special. So I've also taken the XOXO sentiment, and that's also from the type sentiment stamp set. And I've stamped it onto one of the skinny little banner strips, and I'm sliding that inside of the envelope there. And I'm just attaching it with a little bit of foam adhesive to give it, once again, a little dimension. <laughs> And then I'm gonna finish off my card with some of these enamel shape sprinkles from Doodlebug. Now I started out by using like pink heart on the pink envelope, orange heart on the orange envelope, but you know what? <laughs> I got to the purple and realized that there was no purple. So I went ahead and switched all these out to the pink hearts on each one of them. And I sprinkled a few pink hearts in the background. Now, if you do not have these enamel shape sprinkles, that's okay. I'm totally obsessed with them lately. But you could use the little die cut heart that falls out of these envelopes when you die cut it. And you could die cut those all out of pink and add some glossy accents over the top. And that would give you the same look. So we're almost finished with our card here. I'm just creating my card base and I used a piece of card stock that is cut to five and a half by eight and a half inches and I scored it at four and a quarter to create a top folding landscape style card. And then I'm just using that male background stamp once again to stamp onto my mint card base in some mint ink. That gives it a little tone on tone texture. You really can't see that a whole lot so I could have probably skipped that step but I think it's fun to add texture, that tone on tone texture to your card base, kind of tie it back into the card front as well. Now I added my card front onto my card base, you guessed it, <laughs> with a little foam adhesive just to add some more dimension. And then I finished the card off with a little twine bow there. And I think that's a fun little accent right above that pink envelope. 
So that completes my card for today. It's not an overly complicated card, but I love all the color of all those die cut envelopes. And I think the texture on the cardstock really helps these kind of come to life. And I also really love those adorable enamel pink hearts that kind of dress up the envelopes as well. And as I mentioned before, if you don't have some enamel shaped hearts, you could absolutely create your own using a little bit of cardstock and glossy accents. And it's just a fun way to kind of dress up your card and add a little bit of shine without adding like glitter or sequins. As always, I will have links to the featured products used in this project in the description at YouTube, but head on over to the Coordinating Neat and Tangled blog post. I'll have that linked below. Over there, you'll find more still shots, more information, and a complete list of supplies. Thanks for watching today. I hope you enjoyed this project. If you did, be sure to give this video a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to the Neat and Tangled YouTube channel here so you won't miss any of these fabulous card making and paper crafting video tutorials. I'm so glad you stopped by and hung out with me today. Thanks for watching and until next time, I hope you have a fabulous day.